on once again. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm uh, Andriana. I'm from FSA. I'm a coordinator. Uh, first of all, I want to make a brief no uh, notification. Uh, this video will be recorded uh, at this meeting and then it will be uploaded to uh, our YouTube channel and workplace uh, uh, page. Uh, so let's start. Our speaker for today is Karol Bukstanin. Uh, Karol is our League Big Data Engineer from Poland and uh, his topic for today is Custom Power BI Visuals. Uh, this topic uh, uh, will be presented uh, by Carol. Uh, I hope you uh, all uh, uh, are well. You have a nice mood to uh, dive deeper in this topic and I hope you are all safe. Uh, this is all from my side. Uh, the scene is your, Carol. Uh, are you ready? Yes, uh, thank you for the introduction. So once again, I'm, I'm Carol on based in Warsaw, Poland. Um, I will try to talk a little bit today about custom visualization in Power BI. Uh, so um, the first part may be a little bit uh, trivial. It's going to be just basic uh, knowledge about custom visualization in uh, using R and uh, Python, how to get them up and running on Power BI. And then the second part might be more interesting to the ones who are already um, have some experience with Power BI, uh, which where I will talk about how to create a standalone visual, visualization uh, in Power BI using our language. So it's going to be a hands-on session. I will uh, first talk a little bit uh, about um, Power BI capabilities in general, the limitations, uh, how, how does it work, and then I will just um like actively build something on a power bi and uh, just by sharing my screen and show you how was it done so let me share my screen andrana uh, is my screen visible just a quick check Yes, it is. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, so so yeah, just uh, again a little recap. Uh, first, I'll talk uh, like on the macro level about the topic. Then we will go through some basic visualization in Python in R, and uh, as an example of a custom visualization. Uh, will be written in our language. And at the end, I will always leave some time for some Q&A session. Uh, so uh, some, like anyone who has uh, any experience with Power BI knows that there's a Power BI library, uh, but uh, this is not, not the only limitation of Power BI uh, capabilities. Microsoft uh, provides uh, uh, its own like a store with uh, their own uh, visualization where anyone basically can build their own visualization, get it certified and up upload it to that uh, website. So uh, just let's quickly see how it looks. Uh, I think it's uh, a good practice, like if uh, we had a need or a requirement for a visualization for which uh, the basic visualization do not meet the needs, we can always see maybe there is a, a free open source uh, visualization available, available on the market uh, place. Uh, that would save us time uh, and maybe, maybe that would be a solution to the case. The, some of the drawbacks may be that uh, we, very often uh, uh, we don't know like the, if if the, the, the visualization will be good enough. Some of them have some bad ratings. Maybe they will have some bugs, errors. So we may have some issues with stability. <clears throat> also, sometimes we cannot know how the data is processed uh, inside. 
some of the visualization are uh, some premium we have to pay some sub subscriptions so that may be a limit but in my experience uh, i met several times uh, with a situation that the client was uh, using some uh, for instance uh, <clears throat> catalog with uh, these X this uh, visualization provided by <clears throat> an external company, uh, which um, basically extended the capabilities of uh, uh, visualization like uh, line charts, bar charts. Uh, it enabled us to uh, get running charts with multiple axes, with multiple metrics what wouldn't be possible with uh, regular visualization. Uh, I consider RN Python as a custom visualization because we can uh, code it however we want. So as you may be familiar with, there are uh, these icons here, uh, R visual, R script visual, Python visual. So, uh, as it's pretty obvious that they enable us to type some uh, code in R, either in R on, in Python and build uh, our custom visual. Uh, and last not least, we can build our uh, own visualization, which would be like a um, separate packaged visualization, which we can import into the uh, Fire BI. Uh, such visualizations are written in uh, JavaScript libraries such as D3, jQuery, uh, R language, possibly Python. However, I uh, I didn't find uh, like an easy way to do that. Uh, these visualizations are, in general, the packages are written in TypeScript, which is like a subset of JavaScript. Uh, so to write very customized uh, visualization, which we could find here with uh, some additional dropdowns, some fancy functions, we would need, a, one would need a knowledge of TypeScript and possibly other languages. So, so this is more advanced. Uh, okay, so, I would like to now discuss uh, limitations of such visualization. Uh, when we choose a visualization type uh, of R, there are several, like a set of limitations, which I, I believe it's worth to uh, consider before creating such. Uh, data used by R visual, uh, the the plotting limit is set to 150,000 rows. Anything above that will be uh, just missing from the, the set and the data frame will be cut. Uh, output size, two megabytes resolution, 72 DPI. Uh, these are very detailed uh, limitations. Calculation times five minutes, timeout, I think reasonable. Uh, relationships. So uh, if we add, uh, like with any other uh, visualizations, when we add uh, metrics or columns from different data sets, they need to be related with each other. Mm, refreshes, uh, so our visuals are refreshed uh, at the same time when the data is updated, or there's another filtering uh, on the set in the report or anything is highlighted. So it works in a similar way with, uh, like with other visualizations. And hence the cross filtering is working, but only one way. So if we want to select something, let's say on uh, our R visualization and filter, use it as a filter to add any other ones, it's not gonna work. It's only gonna work one way. So if we use uh, visualization provided by Power BI, some other ones like bar charts, line charts, and we can only filter uh, our visualization. Uh, our visualization do not support renaming input columns. Uh, yeah, this is a more technical drawback, but it's something to, to, to remember. Uh, and uh, Microsoft provides a list 
of packages which are uh, supported in Power BI. So, uh, and specifically in Power BI service, so the interface we see online. And the list is pretty uh, vast, I, I would say. It has, like, uh, this is definitely much more robust than the Python list. Uh, some of them are, some scripts are not supported. So, basically, if we have an idea to create uh, our visualization, it's best to first check if the package we, we are going to use is supported. The same goes with Python, uh, same data limitation, input data limit, uh, 250 megabytes, a bit different uh, relationships. Uh, likewise with R visualization refreshes, the same like with R cross filtering, the same column name means the same. The only difference I would say uh, important one is that Python has a limited number of uh, packages uh, which it supports. Uh, primarily, uh, Power BI's uh, Python uh, visualizations are using Pandas package where any data we are uploading or moving to the visualization is using this package and the data frame is being created on which we can later do any calculations, transformation or visualization using, uh, let's say, Matplotlib, NumPy or Seaborn or any other packages. So, so this is, uh, I think, more of a limit because uh, from a real life scenario on our project, we had the uh, uh, Data science built uh, visualization in Plotly in Python, uh, but uh, there's no such package supported uh, here. So we had to translate it to Plotly in R script, and then only then we could display it in Power BI. So um, I think you know, now it's a good start to uh, start creating some some visualizations. Uh, obvious things would be in downloading and installing Python. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I have already downloaded, but just uh, to be to be clear and on the same page, it's best to download the latest uh, version. Obviously, installation of required Python packages like Pandas, Matplotlib, NumPy. Uh, I have my own environment here. I have already uh, everything uh, installed, but uh, as it is recorded, just to show you how is it done, maybe you don't have uh, much experience with Python. So basically, that's the command to, to download and install one of the packages from the, the public location. And the same goes with other any other packages. So to create a, a simple, right now, simple Python uh, visualization, I will start with a new RBI notebook. It obviously takes some time, as we all know. So um, I would choose a sample data set. <clears throat> so Power BI, as I noticed, um, provides sample data sets. So I I'm going to choose a financial data set with data about countries, products, units sold, some financial data, and some calendar data. I'm going to load it.
Okay, it seems like uh, that it's loaded. So I'm gonna jump back and forth between the presentation and the virtual desktop. So I will start with creating a simple chart. I prepared a, a short code to create a visualization in Python. So I'm choosing the Python visualization. I'm enabling scripts within that notebook. Maybe I will extend. So I, uh, I will start with adding some uh, some fields to it. Uh, I'm going to use country and profit. So uh, let's add that. Uh, so as you can see, um, this Python script editor popped up. Uh, already some uh, there's some information commented out. Uh, so what's done behind the hood? Um, data set objects being created with pandas uh, library. Uh, basically, what I'm gonna get here is data frame country with columns country and profit. Uh, by default, uh, the applications are removed, uh, but we can om omit it if necessary. Um, uh, what I always use to see actually what kind of data I'm dealing with, or if I wanted to test something outside in my own uh, IDE, is to just export data. When we click in the right top corner, we can export the data, which is um, loaded to that specific visualization it works with any other visualization but for this one uh, i'm just gonna quickly show that uh, I, I can export the data and and i can just look it up in a csv format And as you can see, I have just uh, five rows now because uh, I think uh, summarization is turned on. So, so I'm sure now that this is the data that is being loaded into my visualization. Uh, yeah, so a little bit about summarization. So here default setting is do not summarize. I'm using uh, sum to just sum the profit by country. I'm copying and pasting the visualization. I'm clicking run. And we have a very simple Python visual. It's not interactive in any any sense, but it's built within a, with use of Python query. We can customize it, obviously. Uh, I'm not going to cover like uh, Python or R tutorial. I'm just going to focus on the functionalities of of uh, Power BI. Okay, let's uh, move to the presentation. Carol, sorry yes. for interrupting. We have a question uh, in the chat. So the question is uh, from Andre, uh, and it is: Can we use Python virtual, I presume, environment for Python visualization? No, no, this is not support. Um, so just a, a little info for you. So right now in the Power BI uh, desktop, my uh, like desktop environment is being used. We can configure that. So right now uh, it's going to be run with my uh, own instance of Python, which is installed on my desktop. But when I uh, up, would upload it to the Power BI service, then uh, Power BI is providing, let's say, a sandbox for any any Python, which has pre-installed libraries and everything. So I think the, um, there's little space for your own environment. The same goes with, with R. Um, on desktop, I'm using my own environment. In Power BI service, uh, the cloud environment is being used. Uh, I can define which IDE do I use. So for instance, uh, 
if I would like to uh, jump from, from here using this button to my own RB, this would be possible, but I cannot go back. So I honestly, I personally, I didn't find it very useful at that moment. I hope uh, it answered the question. Okay. Let's move back. Uh, okay, so we have uh, our first Python visualization done. Let's move to R. So likewise, uh, we would need to download, uh, skip a bit, uh, obviously R, which is pretty obvious and install required pair packages. So this can be done in a similar way, uh, but not from the console, but uh, from our base. And we are just typing install package uh, and the name of the package. for the sake of the presentation. I have everything already installed, so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna use ggplot and plotly in this uh, scenario. So uh, everything will look uh, very similar to, to Python. Let's rename it to Python. So I'm going to start with as we visual type and it and I need to right now I'm not going to use this data set I'm going to use uh, sample data from R but I need to add does anything to uh, this uh, window for me to, to enable any, any type insertion. Uh, so I'm going to use a data set called Iris. This is something what is built in uh, R. Uh, and it, pro it contains data about species of plants or flowers. I'm not really sure, uh, but the uh, charts are pretty nice. So I thought that I'm going to use that. Uh, I have my own, uh, as I showed you before, I have my own IDE here uh, attached to R, which is R Studio. So right now, if I'd like to jump from this editor to test that in my IDE, there's this uh, arrow. And R Studio is uh, created, uh, although, I don't have my data set here, which is uh, kind of a drawback. Um, and and basically that's it. I can I can edit it and then copy and paste it here if I if I need. Uh, just to show you the data set. Uh, right now we are working on this data set. It's built in in the in our. Uh, okay, so we are over uh, with, we're done with our visualization, Python. It's very simple, I know, so far. Uh, so let's go move on to something more interesting. I'm gonna now uh, build something similar, uh, also in R. So right now I uh, created uh, visualization with uh, using Plotly uh, package. Uh, if you have ever used that package, you should know that it's quite interactive. It has an interface, but using this built-in function, 
um, it's it's just it's basically static and I cannot do anything with probably I, I will be only able to filter uh, filter it out uh, dynamically but that's it what I would like to achieve is something which I will show you in uh, another uh, Just a second. Okay, I just think I don't think it. So anyway, okay, okay, it's loaded. So what I would like to achieve is to make it uh, dynamic. So full functionality of Plotly will be used, and then I will be able to embed it here in Power BI Desktop as well. It's going to be available in Power BI Service. So, for instance, uh, Plotly provides a very nice uh, capabilities of zooming in, uh, playing with the, the chart. It's interactive. I can unselect, select it. I think it's uh, much better than the, just a static image. So, it's not available with. Uh, basic visualization are but i could create my own and here it's it gets tricky but i will try to go step by step how to in a more a simple way create your own package so um we will need to create a setup first of all the environment uh, We'll use something called PBI this. This is a tool from Microsoft, uh, which thing uh, with which we can create a sample uh, Power BI uh, visualization, like a source code, and compile it because it's written in TypeScript uh, and it needs to be just processed, uh, pre processed be before. Uh, uploading to Power BI desktop. Uh, so again, I, I have already done that. There is an instruction uh, step by step provided by Microsoft. So I'm just gonna talk through it a little bit. Node.js needs to be uh, installed as a JavaScript run runtime. Uh, so basically, we would need to just download uh, an installer and install it. Uh, PBI this, uh, we would need to execute this code in, uh, code, um, in Windows PowerShell. So this is the, the tool that uh, compiles the visual source code for, the, for our visual package. Uh, certificate needs to be uh, created and installed. Again, uh, Microsoft provides very clear uh, instruction on how to do that. Uh, there's a comment in PowerShell, then we are copying the, the certificate import wizard pops up. We need to use the passphrase pass to install the certificate. Um, the instruction guides us through installation, so it shouldn't be uh, big of a problem. Uh, important thing to, to keep in mind is to install it in that particular uh, that particular folder. Yeah, to verify that our environment is set up, uh, we can go to the PowerShell and just execute PBI this command, we can see the PBI logo. So that means that it's uh, created. We have even here some description about available commands. We can create new visual, display info, start the current visual uh, and package, but more about that I will take in a while. Mm. So everything uh, I just discussed is uh, I added here to the presentation. I believe it's going to be available to everyone. Uh, maybe last not least here, uh, some uh, additional uh, development libraries will be needed to, to be installed, like these three TypeScript, 
JS Power Visual API. Um, but this is more uh, useful for uh, some advanced uh, development of custom visualization. Hey, Carol, there is <clears throat> another uh, question. So is there a delay with standard visuals rendering? Uh, yes. Uh, so this uh, I would consider it as a drawback uh, if I would go back here. So uh, you have you might have already seen that uh, it took a while for, for this uh, visualization to, to render. And I think when we would publish that in a Power BI service, the delay would be uh, even more significant, although it's on the verge of usability, I would say. Uh, I'm not sure, like quite complicated visualization with uh, not that small data set, let's say 70k rows or 100,000, took 10 to 15 seconds maybe to render. So uh, this is a visible difference uh, with usability of, of the and performance of the dashboard. But in, instead, we get uh, other uh, capabilities we wouldn't get. So, so it's a trade. Uh, okay, so this is it. So we went through, so after completing all of the, these steps, we should have uh, the environment set up correctly for creating the Power BI visualization. So, um i will not try to create a new visualization from the scratch uh, using this this small command um, uh, okay so first i would what i would do is set up a directory to create my own uh, visualization uh, i find it useful to create it under c uh, drive I created a folder called R. Uh, here you can already see three of, uh, of my visualization, which I created. Uh, if I would click in, here you would see a source code of each visualization. Uh, so most of it is written in TypeScript. There are some JSON files, some, some JavaScript, HTML. Um, so this is all of the data used for uh, for this particular visualization. An important thing, uh, uh, I'm gonna create HTML uh, powered uh, visualization. So this is gonna be worked like a HTML box on the website. So, okay, so I'm gonna paste the visualization here that the command here so i'm gonna uh, name it somehow new ah first no oh, i forgot last one so first i need to obviously go to my directory where do i want to create this so i'm gonna go to r okay i have my three here and so now paste the, the, the commands to create the visualization. I'll call it just new our visualization. So PBI this tool now is now creating that new package with some sample uh, with some sample code in R. As you can see, the uh, new folder have been, has been created, new R visual. Uh, so if you would go in any of those, that would be a bit confusing. So uh, I suggest to focus right now, as you can see, this is like a bunch of the JSON code. Um, Important uh, thing to keep in mind is this file script R source file. So this is where our R script is gonna sit. Uh, so 
to 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 render the the visualization uh, the script is using this flatten html r file uh, two libraries are uh, declared here and some right microsoft provides a sample code that we already used before with uh, this iris data uh, so so basically this is like a mm, like a blank visualization uh, on which we will be able to work on later. Okay. Uh, so, um, oops, I think something. Yes. Um, okay, so um, next thing is uh, we can either uh, of course, edit it here. We can take the script from 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 this file and work on that. Just copy and paste it and try to package uh, compile the package. But Power BI uh, enables us to render that, uh, like let's say, live without compiling it before. And we could we can we will be able to test and debug that using Power BI service to do that. I'm gonna use PBI this start command. First, I need to go to the proper directory. So right, uh, change directory and the name of this new arbitrary. Uh, right, so. I started basically my own like uh, small server where I'm uh, streaming my current uh, day, uh, my current visualization, which is sitting right here. So it doesn't require for me to. It's uh, already pre-compiled, I think, and packaged, but I don't need to import it to Power BI. I can't. Uh, work on it from Power BI service. Let's go to Power BI. Obviously, I need to log in. So uh, to debug such uh, custom visualization, the first thing is to turn on the developer mode, which can be found under general settings uh, and under developer tab. <coughs> I have already that selected, so I don't need to do anything. Uh, I can choose, I think, any of the files I previously created. So this was my playground before. So I'm gonna do edit mode. Uh, so uh, when you, you switch developer mode on, uh, you will be able to see here uh, something called developer visual. And 
I'm gonna switch to that right now. So what's gonna happen now? What should happen? This is the exact uh, visualization I have uh, created right here. So 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 this is basically it, and I can uh, test if it's and debug if it's working. If uh, if it, if it's up and running, I don't need to go through the whole process. I can uh, I can check it uh, live. And as you can see, uh, this one is already uh, dynamic, it didn't take much time to load, just 10 to 15 seconds, I would say. And uh, maybe a little, uh, I will digress. Uh, Plotly has really cool uh, like a base of uh, visualizations. I think this is really useful if you would like uh, to use it in your to enhance the visualizations. We can go to the plotly graphic uh, libraries. And uh, the <clears throat> loading obviously very slow. But the capabilities are really, really, really high, I think. Uh, but enables us to uh, do some sample, simple things, bar charts, line charts, uh, some bubble charts, uh, a lot of uh, things for statistics, science, finances. There are many uh, implementations of maps that could be, I think, useful. Uh, AI, 3D. I'm sure if you would uh, go through that, uh, you would find something interesting. So, so I just shortly digress. Let's let's move back. Uh, okay, so I see that my uh, my visualization is up and running. Uh, I don't think there's a comment to stop that. So I'm just going to close that. So to, uh, I still have uh, in my previous notebook, this is static. I would like to create my uh, own uh, custom Power BI visualization. So to do that, I need to go back to my Power, Power Query, essentially Power Show. Switch to the proper directory. Switch to my new one. And I'm going to execute the comma PBI this package. It's going to throw out an error, but uh, we will get to that. So uh, it tried to compile the whole package, but we have some uh, few errors here. So, author name, email description support URL is missing. So basically um, some metadata about the visualization apparently is required uh, by Microsoft developers to develop any custom app. But easily we can we can fill this, this information out by going to PBI this JSON file here in the data source. Uh, if I scroll uh, a little bit, I will find these uh, fields which are missing. So description, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna add anything. Save that. I'm going to go back to PowerShell now and try to repeat the same comments. Okay, this time it went uh, 
so without errors so that's good so where my pack and my new visualization is uh, located now so there's a folder list in uh, the source folder when i go here um, you will be able to see here new r visual with some very long hash or version number i'm just gonna rename it and I will try to import it to my current uh, work. And do that to import visual from a file. So I'm going to find it now. Here it is. So it, uh, <coughs> it appears here. Um, so by default, there's some uh, sample icon, but this is also customizable. If you would like, uh, it is possible to customize <coughs> the icon and obviously everything else. I need to just uh, add some dummy data for it to, to get up and running. Takes a little bit of time to render. And here it's. And as you can see, it's totally dynamic. If I would publish it, it's going to still work because uh, Plotly and GDPot is supported by Firebase service our environment. So I believe that there's still um, a lot of area how to, uh, to, to, to tell maybe how, uh, how to develop your own app, but this is, as you could see, it's more advanced knowledge. So I'm going to just stop here. I think this is still uh, a pretty Cool. I think a way to just create uh, something out of the box, because for instance, uh, in our case on the project, once we had the plotly uh, visualization, but it somehow didn't work uh, in this R script visual like basic solution. Uh, so we had to create it like a standalone package, and then it worked. So. I think this is a useful technique, even though you don't need to understand everything, but the process is quite simple, I would say, to get to this point. The code which we are seeing here is uh, placed in our script file. Uh, so to, to test or develop any, any app, we can uh, just go here, grab this code, paste it in our environment here, play with it. If it, uh, uh, we can use the data set I, we export from the Power BI visual uh, from, from here, export data, use the, the code from here, from script, play with it here in R and get the expected results once the pro uh, proper visualization is uh, displayed then we are just uh, copying it back to the script file compiling the package uh, importing it and here here we go we can use anything basically Adam, we have another yes. question so yeah. how to maintain developed package in time when new power bi versions are released uh, how to maintain mm. It's a tough question. I have never been like um, involved in, in, in maintaining them. I think 
for sure good practice i would say is to uh, document it very well because once the package is compiled there's no way to like do any reverse engineering to see the source code so in such cases for sure uh, our script uh, code should be stored somewhere in git or in the documentation or um, the whole the source uh, should be also stored somewhere although i believe um, microsoft is uh, created just that way that uh, it's gonna work on further releases of power bi but but i, I cannot uh, answer in any more specific way <laughs> okay where's my presentation uh, okay so i think uh, we went to the the end and it's time for more questions so are there any other questions Okay, so Carol, thank you so much for your performance, your contribution. There's, there's one more, uh, there's one more question from Olga. So yes, there's a possibility to upload, but first uh, you would need to uh, certify such uh, visualization. So Microsoft provides uh, specific guidelines how to do that. Um, it's somewhere in the documentation. Let me maybe I will quickly find it. Publish. Yes, it, it's here. So obviously, it needs to be tested. Uh, so so there are guidelines for 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 uploading the visual uh, app source. And how this is how is it called? The marketplace. Uh, I think you can even uh, upload. There are some requirements, obviously, but cert uh, getting it certified uh, makes it more premium, probably. But uh, yeah, I, I attached this link uh, to the documentation in the presentation, so any more details can be found there. Any other uh, questions, maybe? Uh, okay, if uh, there are no questions, then I uh, thank you very much for attendance. Uh, I think it's the biggest uh, presentation in a very long time for me. <laughs> and uh, if you ever, uh, if you would ever try to develop your own uh, visualization by yourself and you would have any trouble, uh, don't hesitate to contact me by writing, for instance, or email. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> Carol, once more, thank you very much for your performance. Your contribution is of great value and appreciation for all of us. Uh, dear participants, uh, please don't forget that your feedback is also very important for us. So after this meeting, we will send you uh, a feedback form and hope you will fill in it. Uh, that's all. Uh, we will inform you about the next events and we will be waiting for you. Uh, thank you all once again for attending this meeting. Thank you, Carol, for presentation. I think everything went very well and uh, we uh, went dived deeper in this topic. So wishing a great Wednesday and the rest of the week. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye.